Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare. <clears throat> hey Tia. Hey. Hare Bhav Prabhus. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. I got to tell you, I got to tell you of my heartfelt heartaches. I got to tell you, I got to tell you of my blissful suffering. <laughs> I tell you, seriously, you know, if you want to get absorbed in the mood of separation, Just hear from an ecstatic devotee of the Lord and then go to the temple for the Mongol Artik and you will be immediately drowned in intense separation from Krishna. <laughs> immediately. You know, hear from the ecstatic devotee of the Lord and then go to the temple and you will get crushed by the mood of separation from Krishna. Absolutely pulverized. It's intense. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It's wild. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. It's enough to drive anyone completely mad in Krishna consciousness. All right, Teresa Lewis. Look forward to joining you every day. Oh, all right. <laughs> That's nice. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. You can get something out of this, you know. That's good. Oh, Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> it's becoming more and more obvious to me that I am blind. I am blind. <clears throat> I'm blind. Now, I know there are people who actually have lost their eyesight. I know that. Actually, um... In the 70s, I used to drive a little school bus for blind children. And um, I would pick them up at their homes and take them to the Perkins Institute for the Blind. So I had a, a little, uh, it was like a little, either a station wagon or a little mini bus full of blind children. And um, what I noticed, although I've heard this and I understand it, that if somebody doesn't have their eyesight, then their other senses become, they have to depend more on their other senses, and their other senses become much more acute, because they have to make up for their loss of, loss of vision. And I, I had first-hand experience of that with the children. Their sense of hearing was just incredible. They could pick up all kinds of sounds, and they could pick up the vibrations that another person was making, you know. In other words, when we see, we can see facial expressions, we can see uh, like body language, and they don't have that benefit. So they have to get it all from sound. They have to get all of that just from sound because they, they can't see. They don't, their eyes, they don't have, the eyes are, is a problem. And I noticed that with those children. They were, they could, it was as if they could see your face because they got your, your um, your expressions through sound, and it was uncanny. 
it was uncanny. And so that was a first-hand experience with them. <clears throat> so what I'm seeing is that I'm blind too. I mean, you know, I can see, you know, but <clears throat> I really can't see. I can't actually see Krishna. I can't see his facial expression. I look at the deity, I can't see his facial expressions. I can't see his body language. I can't see him moving. I see the deity there, and I see that Krishna is accepting service. He's accepting flower garlands, he's accepting incense, he's accepting lamps, he's accepting bags of rice, he's accepting uh, food offerings, he's accepting uh, different service from the devotees, but he can't actually see him. I can see that form of him, the deity, decorated with beautiful plastic beads. <laughs> I can see that form. Uh, <clears throat> pretty much, kind of, sort of. But I can't actually see see him as a, as a person and what he may be experiencing. I can't actually see him. But, in the kirtans, I can hear. Because Krishna is manifesting in that sound. So, for me, I'm more inclined toward the kirtan and the hearing than like staring at the deity with plastic beads and, and flower vases. And, although he's there and he's accepting that, that's a form that's given to us in this age to help us become conscious of him. But for me, it's more like the hearing. So, like in the, in the kirtans, I'm focused on who's chanting. You know, who's ever leading the kirtan. It's like, I look at Krishna the deity and then I look at the chanter. And then I look at Krishna the deity and I lead the, look at the leader of the kirtan. And mostly devotees are just staring at the deities. They're kind of like standing there, maybe moving their feet a little bit, but they're staring at the deities. A few of the devotees, it depends on who's there. You know, because everyone has their different meditations and they're all at different levels of realization and their services are all different. And this is the arrangement, you know, in this movement, there's something for everyone. So sometimes I see there are certain devotees who are also focusing on the sound and they're really tuned in to who's chanting, especially the devotees are playing some sort of a musical instrument to accompany the chanting. And it depends on who's chanting how much of his devotional or her devotional mood allows the others to have this oral darshan. In other words, <clears throat> when we're chanting, we're like the pujari. On the altar, the pujari, he opens the curtains or she opens the curtains so we can see Krishna. And then they make their offering with as much devotion as they can with the fan and the chamara and the incense. And, you know, they're making their offering. Now, the person that's leading the kirtan is like that pujari. He's meant to open the curtain so that we can have darshan of the Lord in sound. And like those blind children, be able to perceive the Lord's expressions, enter into the mood of loving exchange with the Lord. We're meant to do that. Now, some of the devotees are able to do it quite a bit, and it's really nice kirtan. They allow everyone to have darshan of love of God through sound. And some of them are stuck, you know. They, you know, they chant loudly but they don't open the curtain. They can't, they can't open the curtain. They don't open the curtain. And then everybody else doesn't really get darshan of the Lord and sound. Not, not that loving sound of when, when we're singing and we're experiencing love. I mean, even in the material world, you listen to these love songs, they're very intense because they're expressing their emotions, their feelings through the songs. 
So to one degree or another, devotees can do that to one degree or another. So this morning, um, uh, almost, the curtain almost opened. Almost. <laughs> Everyone was waiting in bated breath for the curtain to open. I mean, the curtain to the deities was open. And Pujari was there, you know, waving things at the Lord. But um, the kirtan, although the devotee that was leading did get everyone to dance, it was kind of like um, if you got everyone to do some service physically on the external platform. Um, the curtain didn't really open, but the devotees were dancing because the leader was getting them to dance. But the curtains weren't open. For the oral darshan in love of God, they weren't actually open. So it was kind of like people were dancing around. It was kind of cute, but the ecstasy of darshan of the Lord in loving devotion, um, the curtains didn't open. Oh, Krishna! So it's it's like that. There's a lot of it's like and during japa. It's like Krishna. I mean, this is my experience. I'm just a crazy person, okay? And I'm probably offensive because you know what can you do? That's what I am. But I'm just sharing, you know, what I'm experiencing. And, you know, take it for what it's worth. I mean, you can spit on me if you want. You can call me all kinds of names if you want. I really don't care. <laughs> you know, it's just what I'm experiencing. And I don't do, a, do it out of malice, and I'm not angry. I'm just desperate for love of God, that's all. I'm sorry about that, but I'm desperate because I don't have anything else to look forward to. So, you know, I think when you get older, you know, you, there's a little more leeway, too, you know. Oh, it's just, you know, one of those kooky senior citizens. And they're all off a little bit anyway. <laughs> I play that card as much as I can. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, hi, Krishna. Just, just a stupid old woman, you know. Uh, it's the ultimate call who opens the curtains. Yeah. I don't know who's, who's saying that, but it's true. Uh, what they're saying is, oh, it's Madhu. The bona fide spiritual master is the ultimate pujari who opens the curtains so we can experience pure ecstatic devotional symptoms. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that's why when I go to this Mongol Arti, it's like, it's intense. The separation is intense. It's like during Japa, you know, Krishna's on everyone's lips. Um, you know, someone sitting in the corner facing the wall, sitting erect like a, a yogi. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. <clears throat> you know, someone else is staring at the Prabhupada Murti. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. You know, it's like, there's all kinds of things going on. You know, it's like the curtains are closed to the deity. But he, he's there, and we can open those curtains. He's in the holy name. Oh, God, it's too much, you know. It's really too much. And then there's this super little cat. She's very small. It's kind of a gray cat with little white paws. She is just a super cat. She's always there at the temple. Always. And she, you know, I don't know if anybody else talks to her, but as soon as I say, Hi, Krishna, she goes, <laughs> And she keeps going, and then start rubbing against the temple, you know. I mean, that's an ecstatic cat, you know. <laughs> it's really funny. I just say to her, Hare Krishna, and she goes, <laughs> and There's a little bowl in the back. Evidently, it's for water or food or something. So I was walking around the temple chanting, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. You know, and um, so she's kind of like, she was drunk, you know, she was like staggering from one side to the other. You know how cats do that, in front of you and then to the left and then to the right. 
So she was bumping into the temple building and then bumping into one of the columns that holds the overhang up and then bumping into the... <laughs> and then there was a little bowl there where evidently devotees put like prasad and water or whatever out there for her. She stopped, she stared at her bowl. <laughs> Is there any mercy here for me? The bowl was empty. <laughs> Pretty funny. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Oh, Krishna. Wow. Oh, God. Hare Krishna. Oh, my God. It is serious. We want intense separation. Just go to Mongol Arctic and you, and chant a little bit with the devotees, and you will be, oh, my God. God, you'd be laughing and crying and like, you know. But the way that happens is if you hear, you know, from an ecstatic devotee first, you know, and if you hear from like Srila Gaur Haridas, he's very eccentric, avadu, out there, um, empowered by Sri Jaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Disciplic Succession in a very, very, very wonderful way to present like Madhu says, open the curtains and have darshan of Krishna in the mood of ecstatic love of Lord Chaitanya. And you hear from him, even just a little bit, and then you go to Mongol Arti. I mean, wow. Just intense. So, that's what's going on, and every day I think, I can't live anymore. I just, how can I live like this anymore? It's too intense. And every day I'm fine. <laughs> and then I get up at three and I go to the Mongol Arctic and I, and it's like, it happens again. You know, it's like, oh. And then I hear from Srila Gaur Haridas. <clears throat> and then that's what's going on here. So it's pretty intense. Oh, Krishna. But I'm seeing, you know, that I am blind. You know, I, all this staring at the deity and everything, I, it, I don't relate to that. I don't relate to it. But the sound, that, that I relate to, the, the chanting. That is where I get my darshan of Krishna. That's where I get my darshan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Like, I think Bhakti Siddhanta, um, there's a, an account of he was having darshan, he was having sangha with uh, the devotees, his disciples and whoever else was there. And they were sitting around him and he was speaking uh, Krishna. And um, he's a pure, empowered, ecstatic devotee of the Lord at present. Um, giving everyone darshan of Krishna by his speaking and by his presence. And in the distance, they heard the conch, some of them heard the, they heard the conch shell, and they heard some bells ringing, which meant the curtains for the deities were opening. And some of the people that were attending the darshan of Bhakti Siddhanta excused themselves and went to the arti. Bhakti Siddhanta commented, he said, what will they see? Simply an eye exercise. When the living representative is giving full darshan, love of God, they get up and they leave and they go to the eye exercise. I don't know, maybe they wanted to feel separation. <laughs> Maybe they wanted to intensify their mood of separation, you know. They'd go and have the eye exercise and, and, and become transcendentally completely distressed. <laughs> Maybe that's why they do that. Yeah, they're glutton for punishment of separation. Maybe that's why. 
Ay, qué belleza. <laughs> ah, Krishna. There's there's one one young fella. He's uh, the um, son of one of the older Prabhupada disciples, and he he has some handicap. Some there's something wrong, um, uh, mentally, emotionally, physically. You know, he's his body is kind of like all warped over, and you know his eyes are like not placed properly. I mean, there's some problem. It's he took a, you know, it's kind of deformed birth. But he's such a sweet soul, and he loves the kirtan. I mean, I see him crying. I see that little person there. He's crying sometimes. He's, he's crying, and, and he's looking around the room, and he's looking at the deities, and it's like, where's Krishna? Where's Krishna? Krishna? Ah, oh, he's so beautiful. He's really, really a beautiful uh, young man. He's, uh, I don't know, he's maybe... 14 or 15, I don't know how old he is, but, um, so, so, you know, I was, uh, kind of in that same mood myself, and we kind of picked up on it, you know, and he's looking at me like, are you looking for Krishna too? And I'm like, yeah, where's Krishna? It was really cool. He was the only devotee I could actually relate to in the, in the whole, uh, kirtan. <laughs> he was nice. Him and the cat, you know, it was like, you know, that's where it's at, you know. But, uh, so, afterwards I was outside and um, getting my shoes and stuff, and he was there. And I asked somebody, oh, I asked what was the name of the devotee who had led the kirtan this morning, because I don't know everybody's names yet. I said, what was that devotee's name? And um, this young man was standing there, and he said, yeah, I, I who? because he has difficulty speaking. And he kept saying, who? Who? <laughs> so, he, you know, I just I said to him, I said, somebody called you an owl. And he goes, who, who? And I go, yeah, who, who? And he goes, who, who, who? <laughs> He's such a sweet soul. So, I, you know, I told him, because I found out who it was that led the kirtan. And then uh, he was going around telling everyone who led the kirtan. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh, Krishna. Krishna. Oh, Krishna. Oh, oh man. And uh, so there's one devotee that comes in every day, a little bit after me, like maybe 3.30, quarter to 4, or maybe 4 o'clock. Comes in early. Uh, one of the ladies. And... You know, she's very regular in what she does. She bows down and then sits down and then I'm there and she'll offer me, you know, she'll smile. But the smile is like this. <laughs> Can we get one of those? It's kind of like a twitch. It's like, you know, so I'm sitting there chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And in my face comes this smile. <laughs> Oh, God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. It's more of a twitch. It's like a twitch, a nervous twitch. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so, you know, I don't mean to find fault. I'm not, I don't, I don't find any fault there. I just, it's what I'm experiencing. It's like being in the, the fun house at the, at the, at the, at the carnival, you know. You got all these things coming at you. Twitchy smiles. You know, you know it's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. So, uh, Krishna. Mm. Anyway, I don't know what to do. Uh, I, you know, I just don't know what to do, really. Except keep hearing. And um, just keep chanting. And for me, I guess it's keep going to this uh, Mangalartik until Krishna 
and um, and that's my program. Mom will like teach, and then I stay for like a half hour or so, drop up, and that's about all I can do right now. <clears throat> and uh, I'm not so inclined to go to some of these home programs. Oh, Madison, you got it. Krishna has a good sense of humor. Oh my God, yeah. Oh, are you kidding me? Um, oh, Krishna has a good sense of humor. Oh boy. You know how Srila Gaurhari Das likes to play with the disguises, you know, putting the crowns on people and the mustaches and stuff, you know, on YouTube? You know, I feel like Krishna's doing that sometimes when I'm sitting there trying very seriously to chant Hare Krishna. And then he'll do something like that. I'll be sitting there with a dunce cap. And then I just have to start to laugh, you know? Instead of telling me in words, you don't know anything. You know, having that realization intellectually that I don't know anything. He'll do it, uh, like, um, very graphically. He'll put, like, a dunce cap on me. And that says it all, you know? So that everyone can see how I'm stupid. I don't know anything. I'm sitting there with a dunce cap. He'll do that. At least that's what I experience. You know, I'm sitting there with a dunce cap. Now, today, oh, my God. He dressed me up in a six-armed form. I'm trying to chant Hare Krishna, and he gave me a six-armed form. And I'm like, oh my God, stop doing this. This is too much. Stop it. And I'm like in the middle of the temple room, and I got like this six-armed form. I'm like, yo! You know, maybe it's just my crazy mind. You know, it probably is. But, um... It's what I'm experiencing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Anyway, it makes me laugh. You know? Standing in the <laughs> six arm form. And it's like, nobody can see it. You know, nobody notices. There's something different going on here. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, Krishna. Yeah, I mean, talk about a sense of humor. I mean, that's hilarious. I mean, he does other stuff, too. You know, it's like... Whew. So, you know, now you see how crazy I am. I'm, like, really, really out there. Hi, Krishna, hi, Krishna, 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 hi, hi. Well, you know, I'm, I have no malice. You know, I'm not angry. I have no malice. You know, I'm just, you know... Go on with the wind, you know. I'm not angry. No. I think you know, I'm having too much fun. Why would I be angry? I'm having a ball, you know. I think you know, I think you know, I think you know, I don't know. You know, I don't know where to go from here, but this is where I'm at, and that's what I'm doing. You should do it. Yeah. Oh my God, it's like, oh, Krishna. I mean, he's manifested all his potencies in his holy name alone. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Oh, phew. Um, okay, I'm probably going to read something here. Wait, what, there's something else, Madhu. Madhu, you're good. You always have something to say. I like it. He says, so in the morning, please be merciful to the devotee cat and take some. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to bring. I have, uh, they had goat milk on sale. I'm going to bring her a little goat milk. Yeah. Or they had buttermilk. It was, uh, it's outdated, you know, so it was like real cheap. But it's only outdated by one day, you know. So I bring her a little, maybe I'll just bring her some buttermilk. Probably like some buttermilk, right? Maybe some buttermilk. Yeah. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. I just don't want her to get attached to me, and every time she sees me, she's going to want something to eat. You know what I mean? It's already bad enough. Uh, every time she sees me, she starts meowing, like, you know. I don't want her to, like, you know, you know, really, like, uh, just see me and think it's food time, you know. She's already getting it with the holy name. And she has plenty to eat there. Maybe I won't, you know. Maybe I won't. Just leave her alone. Her meditation's already pretty good. She has plenty of prasadam. 
Yeah, just leave it. She's so well behaved, you know. I mean, most cats, they're a pain in the butt, you know. They're into everything, you know. They're like really a nuisance in some ways because they, they just get into everything, you know. They climb all over everything, you know. They like get into everything. She's good. She doesn't. I mean, the doors to the temple room are open. She doesn't go in. She doesn't go in that temple room. Uh, which, you know, a lot of cats really nuisance like that. Yeah, Krishna likes buttermilk. Yeah, I know, but I, I don't want to mess this cat up. I'll wait and see. If it seems appropriate, I will. Uh, she has plenty of prashadam. She's not skinny. I mean, her little tummy's out, you know, so she get prashadam. So, I don't, I don't want to ruin our relationship. <laughs> it's based on the holy name right now, you know, just leave it at that. So... Okay, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, I couldn't read earlier. I just want, usually I read earlier, right when I come back. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It was like, phew. <sighs> couldn't do anything. Yeah. All right, uh, this is Adi Leela, Chapter 4, The Confidential reasons for Lord Chaitanya's appearance as opposed to the external reasons for Lord Chaitanya's appearance. And um, this is text 34. Uh, and I'll just continue with it <clears throat> uh, for my most humble obeisances to my spiritual master, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And to my dear, dear friend, the spiritual guide, Srila Gaur Haridas. Yeah. Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jai Nichananda Jai Vaita Chandra Jai Agua Bhakti Vida. <clears throat> Text 34. <clears throat> Krishna manifests his eternal, human like form and performs his pastimes to show mercy to the devotees. Having heard such pastimes, one should engage in service to him. Okay, here we go. Krishna manifests his eternal human-like form and performs his pastimes to show mercy to the devotees. Okay, so physically, physically perceivable. He's not born like other people are born, but he does manifest in a human-like form. I mean, he manifests in metal, in steel, in stone, right? Well, he can also manifest in a human-like form. All his all energies are his energies. He's the controller of all the different energies. Why not? Of course he can. And he does. Now, the next part of this is having heard, hello, having heard such pastimes, one should get engaged in service to him. So he's physically present and it's manifest and can be seen as well as heard. His presence can be, see, be perceived visually and some devotees were actually massaging him or feeding him. Um, I'm sure his body had a fragrance. Um, so hearing pastimes now that that form is not manifest, he disappeared, that form disappeared. But hearing of his pastimes, one should engage in service to him. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, which means glorifying him. And that can be done by serving the deity, but especially by glorifying his pastimes, by talking about him with love, relishing his presence in the sound vibration of his pastimes, his name, especially because that's the Kali Yuga. The deity worship is there and it's very helpful, but it's especially the sound vibration. That's where the, the ecstasy is available. The ecstasy of love of God is available in the sound vibration. <clears throat> 
Just like when people sing mundane love songs, we can understand their feelings and moods from these mundane love songs. I mean, the 60s were especially good, you know, like they're especially expressing these different loving emotions, those 1960s in the USA. Right when Prabhupada came, they were singing these love songs full of a kind of, they were very rasic love songs. Um, that right when Prabhupada came in the 60s. He walked right into the middle of that. It wasn't that he came in the middle of the Vietnam protests and the government reactionaries. That was that came later. It said that Prabhupada incorporated ISKCON, made it an official incorporation, so that he could protect the young men, especially from the draft. That's why he incorporated his main one of his main reasons. Well, there were other reasons too, obviously, but that was when he, when he did that. It was an emergency. Otherwise, his brahmacharis would be drafted. This way, they could be um, designated as monks or preachers or or uh, uh, yeah, monks, priests. Um, you know, uh, like any of the other, like the Catholic monks or, the, you know, they were the ordained ministry, so they couldn't be drafted. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. But that was, that came later. That came, you know, a few years later. When Prabhupada came, they were singing these songs, these love songs of unrequited love actually. Most of the songs are about unrequited love. Like, you know, one of them is, uh, if it takes forever, I will wait for you, right? That's that mood of that person. It's misplaced. They're thinking about, you know, Jane Doe or John Smith, right? But that mood is coming out in that song. So, <clears throat> it's in the sound vibration. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. It's the magic of music and the sound vibration. What is it in the spiritual world? All talking is singing. And all walking is dancing. Krishna, 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 Krishna. Okay, having heard <clears throat> such pastimes, one should engage in service to him. Prabhupada's purport. It's a long one, several paragraphs. <clears throat> okay, this text is from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has innumerable expansions of his transcendental form who eternally exist in the spiritual world. This material world is only a perverted reflection of the spiritual world, where everything is manifested without inhibiting. Yeah, in the spiritual world, everything is present and there's no um, drawbacks, there's no reactions, there's no, it's fully manifest without inhibiting. There, everything is in its original essence, free from the domination of time. Time cannot deteriorate or interfere with the conditions in the spiritual world, where different manifestations of the supreme personality, now that's a key word, you know, you can focus on supreme and you can focus on Godhead, but the key word there is personality the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, where different manifestations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are the recipients of the worship of different living entities in their constitutional spiritual positions. In the spiritual world, all essence, all existence is unadulterated goodness. The goodness found in the material world is contaminated by the modes of passion and ignorance. 
So pure goodness is only found in the spiritual world. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Yeah, I've <clears throat> been thinking lately about Krishna as the all-attractive. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. That means Krishna is doing the attracting. He's attracting. Like a magnet attracts the iron filings. Right? Well, Krishna is attracting. He's all attractive. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. And the arrangement is made by Krishna that personality of pure ecstatic love of God, Radharani, is the attractor of the attractor. <laughs> It's by Krishna's arrangement. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It's like, you know, they sometimes you hear them say, <clears throat> Can God make a mountain so high he can't climb it? <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Can God create an entity that's more attractive than himself? Because he himself is attracted to that entity. <clears throat> Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare Hare. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare Hare. <clears throat> okay. Um, the saying that the human form of life is the best position for devotional service has its special significance because only in this form can a living entity revive his eternal relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Wow. So that's even more significant than the demigods. Can you believe that? As powerful and as opulent and as magnificent and as much responsibility as the demigods have, human form has a special significance. Hare Krishna. Because in this form, a living entity can revive his eternal relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The human form is considered the highest state in the cycle of species of life in the material world. If one takes advantage of this highest kind of material form, one can regain his position of devotional service to the Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Got him back at Mongol Arctic. <laughs> so many human beings chanting Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare <laughs> But the curtain's closed. <laughs> on the on the oral darshan. Oh. Open those curtains. That's why when I went to Acharya, I wanted the Lord to appear. It was his loud shouting attracted Krishna Chaitanya to appear. His, his loud shouting drew the curtains back. And the Lord appeared. Hare Krishna Hare. It wasn't just shouting. It was appeals of, of desperation because he didn't see love of Krishna anywhere 
at that time especially it was just all my abodies because of the strong presence of Shankaracharya was the most recent um, empowered personality and he was teaching impersonalism. He brought people back to study the Vedas. Buddha had taken people away from the Vedas because they were misusing the Vedas. And then Shankaracharya, and they'd all become atheists. So Shankaracharya brought the atheists back to the Vedas, but the way he did it was allowing them to have an atheistic interpretation. So Navadweep was swarming with all these different schools and all these different scholars and all these powerful renunciates who were um, extracting an impersonal conclusion out of the Vedas. And Advaitacharya couldn't see love of God anywhere. So he, in desperation, in loving desperation, and obviously an intense mood of separation, was calling out to the Lord to appear. And the Lord heard his cries and he appeared as Krishna Chaitanya. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. I think that's, that's the story, folks. <clears> Hare <throat> Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Okay. Wow, this is really good. Man, I was just talking about this, you know. And look at this next paragraph. I didn't see this, but listen to this next paragraph. Stuff like this happens all the time. Prabhupada says, Incarnations of the Supreme Personality of God had appear in all species of life, although this is inconceivable to the human brain. The Lord's pastimes are differentiated according to the appreciating, appreciating capacity of the different types of bodies of the living entities. The Supreme Lord bestows the most merciful benediction upon human society when he appears in his human form. It is then that humanity gets the opportunity to engage in different kinds of eternal service to the Lord. Mm. What I was getting out of that was um, the pastimes are differentiated according to the appreciating capacity. Here Prabhupada's talking about actual life forms like fish and um, turtles and and dogs and I mean he's talking about life forms and he says Krishna appears in different life forms in all species of life Hare Krishna uh, yeah okay um, according to the appreciating capacity but I'm looking at it in terms of um, like when Buddha appeared, um, he's an incarnation of Krishna, and he appeared according to the appreciating capacity of the people at the time, um, because they were misusing the uh, Vedas for some really uh, nasty stuff that they were doing. Um, it was taking them away from the actual conclusion of love of God, and they were becoming more and more entangled in uh, slaughterhouse stuff, type stuff, which is not, not a good idea. Um, so according to their appreciating capacity, he appeared as Buddha. And uh, led them away from misusing the Vedas, but attached them to him. And then also... Uh, his empowered uh, is, a, is an incarnation of Lord Shiva, Shankaracharya, under the instructions of the Lord, uh, according to the appreciating capacity of the people at the time, um, because they were absorbed in this Mayavadi atheistic conclusion. He simply built on it and, in order to bring them back to the Vedas. Hare Krishna. So you might ask, well, according to the appreciating capacity, how is it that he's appearing as Lord Chaitanya, giving the highest ecstasy 
of the love of God. In conjugal mellow, nonetheless. How is that possible? What is the appreciating capacity of the living entities now? Well, they're simply absorbed in lust. Everyone's simply engaged in lust. Lust for money, lust for each other, uh, men lusting after men, women loving after women. They're, they're even lusting, I mean, this goes on, lusting after animals. They're lusting after children. I mean, you know, lusting after power. It's all lust. Everything is degraded. There's no structure to the society. It's just built on lust, the whole thing, all over the world. All the different spiritual cultures are um, <laughs> battling this and not doing very well with it <laughs> for the mass of people. They're lusting after killing and eating animals. It's just all lust. So, according to the appreciating capacity of the people at the time, <laughs> the Lord appears in conjugal... Oh, you want to lust? Okay, here you go. And Prabhupada says, he says, the great sages, they're attracted because they recognize Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the common man who is completely absorbed in lustful activity, will be attracted to Radha and Krishna. Oh, you mean there's this kind of stuff that goes on in the spiritual world? I mean, really? Oh, wow. I don't know, maybe I better check this out. What's going on with this Radha Krishna stuff? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Krishna, he's giving the highest ecstatic love of Godhead to the lowest, most degraded semblances of human beings. Oh, Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Oh, Krishna. Okay, next paragraph. Special natural appreciation of the descriptions of a particular pastime of Godhead indicates the constitutional position of a living entity. Special natural appreciation of the descriptions of a particular pastime of Godhead. How important is this hearing? Appreciation of the description indicates the constitutional position of a living entity. Adoration, servitorship, friendship, parental affection, and conjugal love are the five primary relationships with Krishna. The highest perfectional stage of conjugal relationship enriched by many sentiments gives the maximum relishable mellow to the devotee. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. This is Prabhupada talking, Prabhupada saying, you know, Prabhupada says, <laughs> Hare Krishna. Okay. The Lord appears in different incarnations as a fish, tortoise, boar, as Parshuram, Lord Ram, Buddha, and so on, to reciprocate the different appreciations of the living entities in different ages of evolution. There it is. Yeah. And that's just that's just what Krishna let me talk about a few minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. The conjugal relationship of Amr's love called Parakiras is the unparalleled perfection of love exhibited by Lord Krishna and his devotees. Hare Krishna, the highest being given to the lowest. Because really, it's just misplaced. All this lust that's going on, it's just misplaced. That's all, it's just misplaced. 
Yeah. And when that lust is purified in relationship with Krishna, it doesn't change. It's still a kind of lust. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. And Prabhupada says, unparalleled perfection of love exhibited by Lord Krishna and his devotees. So it's just misplaced. A class, so-called, oh, okay, good, Prabhupada's going to help us here. He's going to talk about the sahajis. Because that has to be, you know, because you can't jump over. And it has to go through the actual... Um, Krishna's arrangement, the actual line of succession has to be there. It can't be, um, you can't jump over it. You know, just try to superimpose this material thing. That's got to go, it goes, it has to be gone because this is, we're talking about pure relationship on the spiritual platform. So it's nothing material. Hare Krishna. So Prabhupada's going to help us here. He says, a class of so-called devotees known as sahajiyas try to imitate the Lord's pastimes. Although they have no understanding of amorous love in his expansions of pleasure potency. Yeah, it's external. And they try to imitate because they want that. It's like a material sex feeling. It's like they make it like a, a worship of sex, really. They try to, you know, they dress up, you know, and uh, it's like, Hare Krishna. It's all external. Their superficial imitation can create havoc on the path for the advancement of one's spiritual relationship with the Lord. Material sex indulgence can never, material sex indulgence can never, Material sex indulgence can never be equated with spiritual love, which is in unadulterated goodness. Hare Krishna. Krishna's transcendental pastimes display eternal servitorship to Adhoksudra, the Supreme Lord, who is beyond all conception through material senses. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <laughs> In the old days, there was one devotee, I won't say who, but um, they're very nice. They, they're completely uh, very sweet devotee now. But they're a little uh, out there in the early 70s, and one time they managed, when the, I guess when the curtains were closed, they managed to get up on the altar and, and try to kiss and hug Krishna in the deity form. <laughs> it's not exactly the right way to, to go to Krishna, you know. <laughs> Woo! No, it doesn't work that way. Hare Krishna. They're very different now. <laughs> so people try to do that with each other also, you know. Uh, like, you know, kiss and hug each other to get Krishna, you know, it's like, eh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, these things can be a problem, unless uh, there's some guidance from an actual lover of the Lord, you, know, you can give some guidance, uh, <clears throat> uh, how to not become bewildered by these kinds of things. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Materialistic conditioned souls do not understand the transcendental exchanges of love, but they like to indulge in sense gratification in the name of service. Yeah. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. The activities of the Supreme Lord can never be understood by irresponsible persons who think the pastimes of Radha and Krishna to be ordinary affairs. Oh boy. No way. 
The rasa dance is arranged by Krishna's internal potency, Yogamaya, and it is beyond the grasp of the materially affected person. Trying to throw mud into transcendence with their perversities, the Sahajiyas misinterpret the sayings Tat Part Vena Nirmalam and Tat Parobhavet. By misinterpreting Tadrishi Grida, they want to indulge in sex while pretending to imitate Lord Krishna. Yeah, that's the big one. That's the big one. That's the biggie. That separates the boys from the men. <laughs> that's the big one. That separates the wheat from the chaff. <clears throat> They want to indulge in sex while pretending to imitate Lord Krishna. That was the problem when uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur uh, was empowered to spread love of God. Um, he saw that Vaishnavism had deteriorated into uh, like a sex cult, you know, just a sex cult. And no intelligent, upright person would even consider studying the Goswami books or hearing anything about Radha Krishna because all they saw around them was this imitation stuff and it was it was pretty nasty really all the sex stuff and um, at least that's my understanding but because he was a highly uh, situated government official and very respected uh, by him beginning to um, teach and explain about the actual path of devotional service in love of God, then um, it cleaned up the mess. But um, they, they can cause a big problem like that. The prophet says, but one must actually understand the imports of the words, there you go, through the intelligence of the authorized Goswamis. Srila Narutam Das Thakur, in his prayers to the Goswamis, has explained his inability to understand such spiritual affairs. Narutam Das, oh my goodness, he's praying that he has an inability to understand. And he's praying to the Goswamis. Uh, this is familiar here, I don't know if, I don't want to butcher it, but Rupa Raghu Natha Pade Haibe Akuti Kabi Habi Bujabe Se Yugala Pariti. Yeah, he his songs. This is from one of his songs. And um yeah, the songs of the Vaishnavas, they really uh they carry the these ecstatic loving moods, these songs. Um the translation is when I shall be eager to understand the literature given by the Goswamis, then I shall be able to understand the transcendental love affairs of Radha and Krishna. And Prabhupada continues, in other words, unless one is trained under the disciplic succession of the Goswamis, one cannot understand Radha and Krishna. The conditioned souls are naturally averse to understanding the spiritual existence of the Lord. The conditioned souls are naturally averse to understanding the spiritual existence of the Lord. And if they try to know the transcendental nature of the Lord's pastimes, while they remain absorbed in materialism, they're sure to blunder like the Sahajis. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Ram. Unless one is trained under the disciplic succession of the Goswamis, one cannot understand Radha and Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna.
text 35. Uh, uh, here, the use of the verb bavet, which is in the uh, Bengali. Here, the use of the verb bavet, which is the imperative mood, tells us this certainly must be done. Non-compliance would be abandonment of duty. Okay, so what must certainly be done? That's the previous verse. Having heard such pastimes, one should engage in his devotional in service to him. Okay, so now the next verse is <clears throat> uh, non-compliance with this would be an abandonment of duty. Okay, so this is appealing to those who don't have any taste yet. Yeah, appealing to them that from the standpoint of doing your proper duty, you should hear these pastimes of the Lord. It's your duty to hear that. <clears throat> okay. Um, purport. <clears throat> this imperative is applicable to pure devotees. Hmm. Neophytes will be able to understand these affairs only after being elevated by regulated devotional service under the expert guidance of the spiritual master. Then they too will be competent to hear of the love affairs of Radha and Krishna. Hmm. Hare Krishna. I don't know, wouldn't a pure devotee just naturally be inclined to hear? Why would they see it as a duty? Maybe there was something more in that verse. Having heard such pastimes, one should engage in service to him. Yeah, okay should engage in service, having heard the pastimes. <clears throat> okay, as long as one is in material conditioned life, strict discipline is required in the matter of moral and immoral activities. The absolute world is transcendental and free from such distinctions because there, in liberty, is not possible. I'm going to look up that word because Prabhupada used it twice now in his purports. I kind of know what it means. It's like intoxicated kind of thing. Let me see. Prabhupada's use of the English language was really, uh, he had mastery of the English language more than, um, he would use second and third meanings very effectively. Uh, okay, this is Merriam-Webster's definition of liberty. Uh, drunkenness. Yeah, inebriated. Drunken. So inebriated with material energy, material desire. Drunk. Yeah. Hare Krishna. I uh, got some synonyms here. Intoxicated. Yeah. Huh. Looks like we only have two choices. We either become intoxicated in the love of God or we become intoxicated with uh, the material energy. It looks like we're meant to be drunk all the time, one way or another. <clears throat> okay. The absolute world is transcendental and free from such distinctions because... There, inibrity is not possible. We're talking about material inibrity. But in this material world, a sexual appetite necessitates distinction between moral and immoral conduct. There are no sexual activities in the spiritual world. Transactions between lover and beloved in the spiritual world are pure, transcendental love and unadulterated bliss. So that's the other kind of inebriety. It's not, uh, 
It's uh, bliss instead of material and liberty. Yeah. Because of this sex appetite, there have to be distinctions to moral and immoral conduct. Material sex. One who has not been attracted by the transcendental beauty of Ras will certainly be dragged down into material attraction. Thus, to act in material contamination and progress in the darkest region of hellish life. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. But, by understanding the conjugal love of Radha and Krishna, one is freed from the grip of attraction to material so-called love between man and woman. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. There's different kinds of intelligence. There's, I think, four basic types that are discussed. The first type of intelligence is simply by hearing one gains the uh, message that's being transmitted. Simply by hearing. That's first class intelligence. Second class intelligence is they hear the message. Like, just use the example that I've heard used is stealing. So first class intelligence is stealing, we should not do. And there may be some reasons because everyone has their quota and you'll get a reaction. Uh, you always, there's always a reaction. If you take something that's not meant for you, you get a reaction and you have to suffer for it and, and you hurt other people, you know, appealing to a sense of compassion and it should not be done. Stealing is, it's not going to make you happy. Hare Krishna. It's going to cause you suffering. And that, so the person hears that and they go, well, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, sure. No problem. I have no desire to steal. Second type of intelligence, they hear all of that. You know, you know, suffer for it, you get a reaction, and you don't take things that don't belong to you. It's the way the universe is created. It's, but they're in a path of temptation. And they see, you know, there's this money lying on the table. You know, it's like, it's a lot of money. It's like hundreds of dollars, you know. And they can't control themselves. They take it. Like, I had that happen when we were um, <clears throat> going door to door selling paintings to try to uh, pay off the mortgage at Keenan Nagari. It was a ladies' traveling party door-to-door -door with oil paintings, decorative paintings, uh, you know, decorative art. And um, I had a little money pouch tied to, I was wearing a long skirt, I had a little money pouch tied to my belt. And the other devotees told me, don't leave it like that, it's gonna, you're gonna lose it, it's gonna fall off, it's not a good idea. Oh, it was safety pin, big safety pin. Don't do that, it could fall off and you're gonna lose it. Ah, no, no, it's fine. Me, no, no, I'm good. I, I don't tell me what to do. I'm good. It's fine. I'm fine. Sure enough, I went into one house. They were kind of poor people. And, uh, no, it was candles. This time we, we sold a lot of stuff. It was candles, hand carved candles. And they went in and um, somehow this woman and her son, they managed to scrape together a few dollars to buy the candle. And, because uh, I told them what it was for, you know. And um, so they were so happy. They, they did a little, they gave a sacrifice. And I thanked them so much and went outside and I noticed my pouch was gone. The safety pin had become undone. It was in the chair, right? It had fallen. I was sitting in a big soft, like, fabric chair with cushions. It had fallen into the chair. So immediately I turned around and I knocked on the door and the young, her son's voice said, Who is it? What do you want? It was completely different from when I had knocked on the door the first time. And I knew, uh-oh, they found the money. And they're poor. So I said, it's me. I was just here with the candles. 
I think I, I dropped my pouch in your house. He said, oh, you dropped a pouch? Uh, let me see. And came back. He says, no, no pouch in here. They had temptation. They know not to steal, but they were tempted. So I said, is your mother there? He said, no, she's in the bathtub. She's taking a bath. Can't come to the door. <laughs> so I went back to our party leader, who's in some ways a lot more sane and responsible than I am. I'm kind of like out there. I always have been. And she was the party leader. And um, very level-headed, you know knows how to manage. And so she came back with me and we knocked on the door and she talked very sweetly and they opened the door and they let us in. And um, our party leader, her name's Lolita Shockey. She's very, uh, even now she has a very responsible post in the school here, um, managing uh, so many things for the school. And, um, <clears throat> So she sat down, we sat down with the woman and her little boy, and she, you know, Lady Shockey explained in a very nice way that, you know, that if they found it, that they should return it, it would be much better for them because, you know, we're on a mission to try and spread God consciousness, and the money would be used for um, our project. You know, she was very straightforward, very loving, and the woman and her son had a big, oversized Bible. I mean, it took up the whole, it was a coffee table. It like took up half the coffee, ta coffee table. And the woman was holding the Bible open with her hands on it. So they were poor. And this was like a godsend to them. Like maybe they could buy groceries or, you know, and so they stole the money. And they, they were praying to God that maybe it must have been God's gift to us in our time of need kind of thing. Which, you know, whatever. But it's a temptation, see? So, um, someone with second-class intelligence, if the temptation, they know they're not supposed to, but if the temptation comes, then they might even pray to God to indulge, you know, whatever it is, sex or money or, you know, whatever it is. They may even be praying to God as they succumb to this uh, temptation. So, they have to learn that way, not to do it, because, you know, there'll be some reaction. I'm sure those people got some reaction for, for stealing that money. And um, so they have to learn that way. Wait a minute, I'm not, that might be the third way. No, no, that's the second way. That's the second way. You learn by going through it yourself. No, no, that's the third way. Second way, sorry. <laughs> the second type of intelligence is, yeah, that's the third type. That's the lowest type. The, the second, that's, yeah, that's really down there. The second type is they see someone else getting a reaction for doing the forbidden thing. And then they see, oh, yeah, I, I, I heard about that. You're not supposed to steal. Like they see them caught by the police, right? Thrown in jail. Uh, they see them lose their job. Uh, different things, you know. Like in some countries, you know, they get their hand cut off. Oh, okay, I get it. No stealing, right? You get your hand cut off. So that's one way to do it. It's pretty dramatic, but it doesn't take too many people walking around missing a hand for everybody to get it, you know. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare. And then the third type is, they see somebody get punished for doing the forbidden thing, but they still insist on doing it themselves. The temptation comes, even though they've heard, they've seen, they're not very intelligent, and they go through it, and then they learn. And then the fourth type of intelligence, <clears throat> some of us, unfortunately, uh, many of us, I might even say that most of us really, uh, anyway, a lot of us, um, they hear about it, they see somebody else get a reaction for it, and they still go ahead and do it anyway, and they still don't learn. And they get the reaction, and they still don't learn. 
they may have to go through it like so many times before it sinks in. Oh, yeah, that's why, you know, I'm suffering in this way because, oh, that makes sense now, da. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> yeah, simply by hearing, that's the first type of intelligence. So, in this purport Prabhupada's discussing, he says, one who has not been attracted by the transcendental beauty of Ras will certainly be dragged down into material attraction, thus to act in material contamination and progress to the darkest region of hellish life. So, that's your fourth class intelligence. Get dragged down, you still don't learn. But by understanding the conjugal love of Radha and Krishna, one is freed from the grip of attraction to material so-called love between man and woman. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. See, that's, that's sometimes, you know, hearing that, somebody is uh, like Brahmachari, uh, may be able just by hearing to avoid having to learn the hard way, as they say. Uh, but nevertheless, whether you learn by hearing or you have to learn the hard way, the main thing is to learn. Okay, so we got a lot of slow learners around. Um, but the main thing is to learn. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And under the guidance, <clears throat> of a devotee who is very well versed and, and uh, advanced in relishing the spiritual ras, they can speed up the process for the devotees so they don't have to go the long route. Um, if someone can get it just by hearing, well, great, you know. But if they're starting to go the long route, <clears throat> having to try and learn by experiencing over and over again, maybe. I mean, I know some devotees who've been married like three, four, five times and they're still trying to, you know, get some kind of ras out of a relationship between, you know, sexual relationship between man and woman. I mean, really? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. So instead of going through the long route, if one is fortunate enough to have the association of a devotee who's relishing these um, mellows of devotion, especially the conjugal mellow, um, it can speed up the process of getting free from this attraction, material attraction to man and woman, and having that not killed and squelched so you become like a zombie, but having that transferred to the spiritual realm, Radha and Krishna. It can be, it's, it's just has to be transferred. So that's why I consider myself, you know, really fortunate to be able to hear from someone like Sri Gaur Haridas. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Uh, uh, Okay, become freed from the grip of attraction to material so-called love between man and woman. Similarly, one who understands the pure, but that doesn't mean that they don't experience any love anymore. See, it's like just by having like control, um, it's like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Um, the thing about um, transferring our attachments to Radha and Krishna is <clears throat> it's more relishable. Can you believe it? Better than sex? Oh, I can't believe that. Yeah, well, it's true. If you get a little taste of it, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. And that, you have the association of devotees who are relishing this, this transcendental mood of love of Godhead, of, in the ecstasy, ecstatic love. 
then, you know, it's kind of infectious because they put out a vibration. Their sound vibration is carrying their mood of love for Krishna because Krishna's present in sound. So if you hear from them, you know, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 you kind of get infected. Just like if you listen, you know, you listen to some of these love songs, you know, like I was saying from the 60s, they're really kind of rasic love songs. You pick up on the mood, it carries you, you know. Um, yeah, they're nice little songs, actually. It's, um, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So it's like that. Our sound vibration carries our mood of love for Krishna. Oh, Krishna. Krishna. <clears throat> so, um, if one accepts Krishna as the Supreme Friend, the attraction of material friendship will be finished for him. Ha. Huh. <laughs> Krishna. Yeah, you don't need, you know, a special friend, material friend. You don't need a special material friend. You really don't. <laughs> you really don't. You really don't. Ah, oh, really don't. Ah. Oh. <laughs> uh, now, it doesn't mean that you don't need association. You, you relish association of devotees who are developing their loving relationship with Krishna. That is something different. Now that's transcendental friendship. Krishna, that's different. It's not a material friendship. Because that's what Prabhupada says. Attraction for material friendship will be finished. And he will not be dismayed by so-called friendship with mundane wranglers. If he is attracted by servitorship to Krishna, he will no longer have to serve the material body in the degraded status of material existence, with the false hope of becoming master in the future. Hmm. Krishna, Krishna's just misplaced, that's all, it's misplaced. Similarly, one who sees the greatness of Krishna in neutrality will certainly never again seek the so-called relief of impersonalist, avoidist philosophy. Okay, so that's a nice stepping stone for the voidists and the impersonalists is to at least develop um, appreciation of Krishna, at least in a neutral, at least acknowledge he exists, basically. And that there's a dynamic of Krishna and me, that there's a dynamic. We can remain neutral to that, and that will save them from me. It's all one, and there's no me and you, there's just a big woo. If one is not attracted by the transcendental nature of Krishna, one is sure to be attracted by material enjoyment. Why? Because we're iron filings. Yeah, and I, like the iron filings, they're attracted one way or the other. And when Krishna says he's all attractive, he's all attractive, which means our position is to be attracted. He's the attractor, and we're attracted. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. <laughs> If one is not attracted by the transcendental nature of Krishna, one is sure to be attracted to material enjoyment. Thus, to become implicated in the clinging network of virtuous and sinful activities and continue material existence by transmigrating from one body to another, only in Krishna consciousness can one achieve the highest perfection of life. Hare Krishna. Whoa, okay, shoo. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 
Yeah, yeah, going back about the um, draft. Yeah, that's why Prabhupada, he incorporated to protect the devotees. He didn't do it necessarily to make a big company. You know, he, he did it, it was to protect the devotees. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Yeah, Madhu brings up the point, conscientious objection. I don't know why they didn't do that. Um, I don't know if people were very successful with that. Um, were, was that a successful strategy, conscientious objection, or were there some really harsh repercussions for that? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I think the... Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses also, they don't, they won't participate in a war, and um, they are able to avoid it on the grounds of their religion. But uh, anyway, that's what Prabhupada did at the time. Maybe there were other reasons too. He saw there were a lot of assets, and maybe it was time to protect them. Um, we don't know. But the reason, the timing for it, was certainly connected to the Vietnamese War and the draft. The timing of doing that. He may have done it later anyway. I mean, when you have assets, you know, to be protected. So, yeah, that was that. Wow. Two verses. Hare right, Krishna. They were really long verses, so. With big purports. Hare right, Krishna. Big juicy purports. Uh, and it's going to, Prabhupada's going to start to discuss something else in the next verses, so, oh, Krishna, just, I feel better, you know, just being able to, you know, try to talk about Krishna, and, um, phew, just feel so much better, you know, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, hear and chant about Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. <clears throat> Thank you for, for being here, whoever's here. Thank you. I don't know if I, you know, help you or enliven you, whatever. I don't know. Be nice if you did. But, um, Krishna. Whew. Govinda. Haribo.